exercise 2.1 question 8 now that question says that the zeros of the quadratic polynomial x square plus kx plus k where k is not equals to 0 we have four options with us either they cannot be both be positive second cannot both be negative third are always unequal and fourth that is always equal So, we have these four options with us and we need to see that what our option is correct. Now, before solving the question or coming up with the solution of the question, I would like you to give it a try and see if you can solve it. And if yes, if you are ready with the solution, you can click on and you can come back to the video. Till then, maybe you can pause and you can try it yourself. Now, before starting up, what we can do is uh, we can wait for a few seconds. Just give it a try then. I will be waiting for 5, 10 seconds maybe. Okay, before starting the solution, I would I would tell you to please share, like and subscribe our video if you like it. And if you can, if you have any comments on to it, please add on to comment box. If you need any other questions to discuss or any other uh, examples to discuss, you can let us know. So now, let's start with our question which is, the zeros of the quadratic polynomial cannot both be positive or cannot both be negative or are always only unequal or are always equal. So since we have an equation like x square plus kx plus k, now to find the zeros of the quadratic polynomial we need to equate it to zero. Now we need to find the zeros of it. To find the zeros of it, we will be solving ahead with minus b plus minus root b square minus 4ac upon 2a wherein if I just check that out we will be comparing it as ax square plus bx plus c. So a will be 1 over here, b will be k and c will be k. Now since this is the solution of roots will be getting but if I am talking about real roots only then this d discriminant or b square minus 4ac this d will be greater than 0 which means if I put the values of a, b and c we will be getting k square minus 4 times 1 times k which means we are having k square minus 4k is greater than 0 or we can write it as k into k minus 4 which is greater than 0. Now if k and k minus 4 two things are there or two numbers are there. So, we know that the multiplication or the product of these two numbers should be greater than 0 or these two expressions should be greater than 0. Now, that will be possible only if k and k minus 4 either they both are positive or they both are negative. Now, if k and k minus 4 are positive that means k should be greater than 0 and k minus 4 should be greater than 0 which means k should be greater than 4. So if I just check out the number line, we will start with 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So for the number line, k is greater than 0 that means this one and k is greater than 4 that means from here till infinity. So what is the common, what are the common things in between, between like k is greater than 0 and k is greater than 4. What will be the common value for k over here? You get it right. So, k is greater than 4. That means from 4 to infinity is the value for k. So, we know that k is greater than 4 over here. Now, what if both k and k minus 4 is less than 0? Now, what we can get? That k is less than 4. Now, again, if I just check out the number line, What do we get? Now k is less than 4. That means this side and k is less than 0. Again this side. So it will be the common value for k. That's correct. k is less than 0. Now if I check these two values, what do we get? On the number line if I check, we will be getting 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 and so on. Minus 1. Now k is less than 0, that means 
zero till infinity till minus infinity and greater than four. So four till infinity. So for so four to infinity and over here zero to minus infinity. So this is which we have with us. Now it says we need to check that the zeros of the quadratic polynomial this cannot both be positive or negative or equal or unequal. Now we got two values for k. So let's try and take one or two examples. Let's try and take k as minus two maybe. Let's try and take minus two and let's try and find the value of x which we have. So x will be minus b. If I'll talk about minus b, that'll be minus k. So minus k and we know the value of k which is minus two plus minus root b square. That means k square. That means four. Minus 4 into 1 into k. That means 4 into 1 into minus 2, which is minus 8 upon 2a. That will be 2. So if I solve it, I'll be getting 4 plus 8, which is 12. And if I take the square root of it, we'll be getting 2 plus minus 2 root 3 upon 2. If I take 2 common, I'll be getting 1 plus minus root 3 upon 2. We can cancel 2 out, and we are left with only 1 plus minus root 3. So I'll be getting two roots over here. Either that will be one plus root three or one minus root three. Now, if it's one plus root three, and we know the value of root three, which will be one point seven approx. So if I'll be adding it, we'll be getting the roots positive here, and the second root will be if it's one point seven, the second root will be negative. So if we have value which is less than zero or minus two, minus four, minus ten, minus hundred. You can take any of it, and you'll get the same thing. That the roots will be for one root will be positive and one will be negative. Now, what if we have any number greater than four? Because other value for k which satisfies it is greater than four. So we can take um, let's say x uh, k as five now. Now, if we have k as five, what can we find as x? So again, we'll be getting minus five. Plus minus b square, which is k square. That means 5 square, which is 25. Minus 4 into 1 into k. That means 4 into 1 into 5, which is 20 upon 2a. That means 2 into 1, which is 2. Now, if I solve this up, we'll be getting minus 5 plus minus root 5 upon 2. Now. If you know the value of uh, root five, if I'll just take it approximately, it will be greater than two. Why? Because root four is two. So let's say if I value like two point one or two point two for root five, then if I'll solve this out, we'll be getting minus five plus root five and minus five minus root five. So we'll be getting upon two upon two. So we'll check with the You know, with the roots which will be getting will be positive, negative, or what? Now, if if I approximately say root five is two point one, let's say. So let's say two point one. If we'll be subtracting five from it, we clearly know that it will be negative one. Again, the second thing. Again, root five. If I'll take two point one. Again, we'll be getting negative. So we can see what what can we see? In the first thing, one is positive and one is negative. In the second case, both are negative. So we know. That both the roots can be negative, so we can straight away cross this up, which is cannot both be negative. Now these two we know that are always unequal and are always equal, since it's positive and negative. So we can straight away say that it cannot be are always equal. So we can straight away cancel this out. We are left with cannot both be positive and are always unequal. Now we are not sure if it will be unequal or equal. Now, one thing which we have in our mind that will be for sure that they cannot be positive together. Why? Because these two. Let me just change the color. Because over here, the first one, we know that we'll be getting either positive and negative. That means opposite signs. So for sure, they'll not be positive. The second one, we have both negative signs. For sure, they will not be positive. So the final answer is A. That means the zeros of the quadratic polynomial x square plus k x plus k cannot both be positive. I hope you understand that. Till then, take care. We'll be coming up with other questions of this chapter only.